This is Echo 3, and let's continue our ComNet discussion. In the last video, we looked at how to calculate the power of multiple antennas and how to calculate uh, the signal strength between crafts or between the craft and the ground station. In this case, we're going to be going back to Minmus, and you can see that our one antenna and a level 3 tracking station have plenty of power to communicate. We're going to be creating a series of three relay satellites. This bottom satellite that I have created is going to take the whole stack out to Minmus, and then we'll have two other smaller satellites that we will just drop and get them into their appropriate orbit around Minmus there. They don't really need very much. Um, matter of fact, that's actually more fuel than they need, even though it's the smallest fuel tank in the game. If you want, you can even use something like RCS thrusters. It just gets a little harder if you want to use the in-game Delta V calculators. Um, you can do the math on that if you want, and you really only need, in this case, um, maybe oh, it's even less than 100 meters per second of Delta V. Um, for these crafts to get them into the appropriate orbit. I'm going to put some struts on here because I've got a long thin craft and the more stable I can get it, it'll just make the launch stage and any maneuvers in orbit just a little easier. Put this in a big fairing and then we'll put a few more struts. Um, when you use a long fairing like this, it wants to wobble and so putting some struts in here will help just with the ascent stage, keep it uh, in the fairing. Sometimes if you have a weak connection there, it'll wobble outside of the fairing and things get really bad. This is gonna be a two stage to orbit. This is the upper stage with the Terrier engine. It, it really isn't a lot of uh, craft. We're not dealing with a lot of mass. And so that'll work fine. And then we'll do a lower stage here. And I'm not exactly sure what I was trying to figure out. I want a starting thrust to rate ratio of about 1.3 and I need um, basically 3400 meters per second of delta V to get into orbit. In the end I found the dart engine here um, with these little uh, twitch engines there on the side. Worked out really well. The dart has a lot of power and is very light and these smaller engines are able to have thrust vectoring so it'll make the rocket a little bit more controllable on the ascent. Probably throw on uh, just like four fins here, make it slightly more stable, but this is um, a very aerodynamic rocket and shouldn't have any issues getting to orbit. So we will launch and you know this is just a simple two-stage to orbit craft so nothing too complex there. I have been looking at some additional graphics mods and I have the uh, TUFX mod which adds some nice extra atmospheric effects um, which I really enjoyed it. I'm looking at some other graphical mods as well so uh, maybe in future videos you will see my game look a little different. I've just been experimenting with what's out there. So we will uh, finish circularizing around Kerbin, deploy our antennas, and we'll be in pretty good shape. This is going to get us most of the way into orbit, just small burn with the um, final stage here. Then we will burn out to Minmus, and that will take care of that. Now, to know what orbit we need to get into in Minmus, this actually is pretty easy. The lowest possible orbit that works for relay satellites happens to be equal um, to uh, the radius of the planet. So I need to um, be above the surface by equal to the radius of the planet. So in this case, that's 60,000 meters, and I want to be 60,000 meters above the surface, which would give me a semi-major axis of 120,000 meters. Now, you may want to do something else, like work out exactly what time, because this is the absolute minimum, and that's going to give me a uh, orbital period of 1 hour, 43 minutes, 35.57 seconds. You may want to try to do like a 2 hour orbit, and you can use the equation I listed there, uh, and put yourself just a little higher above the surface. Now, the other way you can really easily find out what your orbital period is rather than doing the math is just cheat a satellite into a 60,000 meter orbit in this case above Minmus and see what the orbital period is. That's actually what I did. I, I went easy on the math on myself. So what we're going to do is um, then 
when uh, we're going to circularize, but I'm not going to circularize into uh, my 60,000 meter orbit. I'm actually going to circularize so that I have an orbital period that is a third more than um, my one hour 43 minutes. So that gives me actually two hours, 18 minutes, 7.4 uh, seconds. And so I'm going to be watching my orbital period for that number there. And that's really what I'm after is looking for the orbital period. Now at this point, I'm going to drop my first relay and it's going to continue um, burning retrograde and lowering the periapsis there. And this is going to be in that basically 60,000 meter orbit or a semi-major axis there of 120,000 meters. And so I'm looking really, the biggest thing I'm looking at is my orbital period. And I want that one hour, 43 minutes, 35, 36 seconds there. The higher orbit you do, the less you need to worry about being so exact with the um, fraction of a second. Now I have Kerbal Engineer pulled up and I can see down to like the uh, thousandth of a second. And I'm, I'm really trying to get as accurate as possible. Uh, the problem is you'll have drift um, if you're not perfect and the satellites will become uh, more misaligned the longer you go. But the more exact you are, the easier it will be to have the satellites stay in their appropriate orbit for longer. So every time I get to my periapsis, I will drop a relay satellite until I've dropped both relays. And then when I get to my main craft, I will then have it burn retrograde as well. <clears throat> and I will get the same uh, orbital period as the other two. So I'm dropping the second one now, and you can see that my first relay is basically one third of an orbit ahead of me. We go ahead and do that, and then we will drop it. And I, um, to be a little bit more precise on your burns, um, well, you can turn the engine thrust all the way down to half a percent but then you can also burn slightly radial in or radial out while you're doing, doing your prograde or retrograde maneuvers. And then you will not be affecting your orbital period quite as much um, when you do that because radial in and radial out burns um, don't affect the semi-major axis. So the orbital period stays the same. Although you will see your apoapsis and periapsis adjusting. And then when we, after we drop the second one, we will do our main craft here and have it deployed and we are ready to go. I am Echo3. Thanks for joining me on this ComNet discussion. I will see you next time.